Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video. In this video, I want to talk about heat pumps. Now, those of you who have had interactions with me maybe know that I'm not the biggest fan of heat pumps for automobiles, specifically for cars like electric vehicles. I don't think that's a good use for them. Uh, the best example is really uh, Nissan, where I feel like they're using it as a sales gimmick. Uh, the complexity that they put into the heat pump, the additional cost, I would have much rather uh, seen them do something with a battery thermal management, right? But, um, you know, heat pumps are here. They're sort of a, a new thing. And I, I just want to say I actually do like the technology and I love the principle of it, right? Because the idea is you're not creating energy. What you're doing is you're, you're simply transferring energy from one place to another. And I think that's a very valuable technology if used properly. And um, in fact, I'll, I'll say it, I, I think it's the technology that could actually end up saving humanity. And I'll, I'll get into that. But the main thing is you have to make sure that when you're using a technology like a heat pump, which is essentially just an air conditioner in reverse, you need the insulating factors to go with it. That's why I don't support the use of heat pumps and things like vehicles, right? Because vehicles are not really designed to hold heat in. Now, maybe this is a carryover from when everything was gasoline powered and you just have such an excess of heat that you couldn't use it all even if you wanted to. And in that regard, it didn't really matter whether you know you were leaking heat everywhere. That's the design of an automobile. So a heat pump where you're trying to just transfer heat from one place to another, it, it's going to be an uphill struggle, especially um, as things get colder and there's less heat energy to you know, scour from outside and from the electronics and things of that nature. But uh, some really important uses for heat pumps are things like homes, right? While you have very good insulation factor on your home, you have double, sometimes triple paned glass windows, uh, you're not leaking a lot of air. So using a heat pump in a home, that's a um, great use for it or building, office building, basically anything that's designed to be well insulated and hold in the heat. A couple other uses for it are uh, like water heaters. You don't need, say, the heat in your attic or the basement. Well, you can pump that heat into your water tank. Again, it's an insulated water tank. You're storing your heat there and it maintains that energy. You're not really losing it. And you're essentially taking heat energy from a place that you don't want it and you're putting it into a place where you do want it. Another example of that in a good implementation, I think, are like a clothes dryer, right? You put wet clothes in, heat pump sucks heat out of the air and heats up the clothes and then vaporizes the water, uh, which then dries it. So an, another, you know, outstanding use for a heat pump. But I want to talk about the technology um, in the next sort of phase of its existence and, and where we go from here. Because I think the technology right now is being wasted. What I want to discuss, though, is the heat pumps and how they could possibly be used, right? And, and the ways in which we're not actually using them to their full potential. Because really, I'm going to, to lump air conditioners into this as well. And heat exchangers... Uh, and, and not just the type of air conditioners you think of for um, automobile or home air conditioning. Uh, we're talking about things like uh, the Peltier devices. We're talking about liquid helium heat exchangers, adiabatic demagnetization, things of that nature, right? Because we're talking about also these heat exchangers and these heat pumps working both directions that uh, can go down to, to very cold temperatures or very uh, warm temperatures. But the big thing that I want to focus on is making sure that whenever we use these technologies, that we're putting them to their best use. And so focusing on an air conditioner, right? 
well, we, we install these five $10,000 air conditioning units for our homes or apartments or, or office buildings. And we literally just blow hot air out into the atmosphere. Well, why aren't we combining these technologies? Why aren't we using those air conditioners or heat pumps to run like a combined cycle uh, steam turbine, right? We're, you're talking about massive amounts of energy that you're moving around and it's costing you a fraction of that total energy to just move the energy. So there should be a net positive, right? So you're talking about taking uh, energy out of an office building, feeding it into a combined cycle steam turbine. You should produce enough energy both to run the heat pump or air conditioner as well as a surplus energy. And this scales down to home use. It could possibly scale down to automobile use, right? So you're talking about air conditioners that literally power your car, air conditioners that literally power your home. And these are things that can run at nighttime as well. You don't need uh, solar panels, right? Like solar panels working during the daytime, but they don't work at night. Well, this technology would work at day or night. But it also combines well with solar panels because when you have an excess of energy from solar panels, you can use that energy to preheat the combined cycle uh, chambers for the steam generator. And you can get that energy back later when you know, you're ready to use it or at nighttime. This is the way it's used at industrial level where they use natural gas or other things to prime a, uh, a solar collector. So. We could do the same things even at a home level where imagine selling now a $5,000 air conditioner that produces $100 worth of electricity a month, right? Now, all of a sudden, you power your home with the air conditioner that you're using to cool it. So again, putting these things to good use. But I think the technology that I'm talking about that could, like I said, maybe save us all is... Right now, you know, massive heat waves after massive heat waves, we're seeing global temperatures rise faster and faster. Our CO2 levels in the atmosphere are nearly double almost what they were uh, pre-industrial levels. And we're seeing a commensurate increase in global surface temperatures uh, that basically matches that increase in CO2. We've made the connection, right? We know that that's what's happening. And you see some of these technologies put in place, like one thing where they're talking about a chemical exchange or basically matching kind of what happens with photosynthesis, where you uh, split water and then you take the hydrogen and you use that to split up the CO2 uh, and then you produce more fossil fuels, essentially you produce more carbon-based fuels. I guess it's okay for sequestering, but that's not what they're going to use it for. They're going to burn it again. Uh, but we're talking about things with like a 13% efficiency rate. That's just ridiculous, right? Why would you even involve chemistry into that equation? We already do fractal distillation to isolate different gases in the atmosphere. Well, CO2 in the atmosphere is just like every other gas in the atmosphere. It contains energy. When you liquefy it for fractal distillation, you're pulling that energy out. Now, you look up these fractal distillation plants and they talk about how much of an energy sink they are. Well, they shouldn't be an energy sink. They should be a power plant, right? Combined with a combined cycle, steam generator, you're pulling the energy out of the air, literally using it to run the power that then you use to run the plant and you should actually have an excess. So we basically are looking at a solution that's also a solution to other problems. And then of course, it, it gets us to the next big problem, which is sequestering the CO2. And we already have a number of industrial uses for CO2, uh, but yeah, the, the sequestration of the CO2 is going to be the bigger issue. But even that plays into some heat exchanger technologies where hypercritical CO2 can be used to exchange heat uh, very quickly, very rapidly, very effectively. That's basically, I just feel like the, these are obvious solutions and we're, we're not leveraging the technology that we already have. Anyway, I'd love to hear what you think about this. Uh, I mean, I would love an air conditioner that helps power my electric car, adds a few miles a day, basically, of, uh, of electric range. 
and all with the benefit of, you know, having a comfortable cabin during summer. Maybe you'd like something like that too. Maybe that's a technology that Tesla should look into to developing or GM or any of these other companies. Go forth with it. I can't build this in my garage. But, uh, but yeah, let me know what you think. If you think this is a good idea, if you don't think there's physics behind it to support it, maybe other implementations of it. I don't know, but I'd love to hear what you think. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, uh, please uh, like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. And uh, thank you for watching.